Hello and welcome to Emily Murray Watercolors. In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you a few tips on painting a black and brown dog, such as the one pictured here, um, and just a few different techniques so that you can try this yourself at home. Let's get started. So here's the photo the client sent me. And one thing I wanna mention about the photo is I want you to look into the black of the face and see if you can see any of the blue hues that are under the black. So with some dogs that I paint, you can see more of a brown undertone and these brown hues, but with a lot of these brown and black dogs that have these similar characteristics, um, like Rottweilers do, you notice that the black actually has more of a blue hue. So uh, that means that the undertones that I'm going to paint for this dog, I'm not gonna paint just black. I'm gonna add some of these blue undertones as well. All right, so the next step is choosing your colors. So here's my palette. I'm gonna show you which colors I decided on for this portrait. Um, most of my colors are from Daniel Smith. So I'm using a phthalo blue. I'm also using quinacridone magenta for the tongue and the mouth area. I'm using lunar black for all the black you see. But underneath all of the black, I'm using moon glow. I don't actually have the tube of Moon Glow because I go through it uh, so often that it's currently on order. So I'm using Moon Glow mixed with a phthalo blue for all my undertones. And then for all my browns, I'm using the Art Philosophy Terrains watercolor pan set. And the two colors that I'm using are these two here. I'll show you what they look like on paper. Those two colors are called maple and sassafras. So I'm using a combination of those two colors to get my browns here. So let's start with the step-by-step -step of how we combine these colors and layer them into the portrait you see. So the first step that I'm going to do for this painting is to create some watery washes. So I wanna block out my colors so that I know exactly what colors go where and where I need to make some darker shades. So right now I'm getting my colors ready. I have a watery wash of the sassafras and the maple from Art Philosophy for the eyes. Then I'm going to get a wash uh, for the, the, the darker black of the coat. Now when I looked at the picture, I noticed some blue tones in the background. So I'm gonna grab a lot of water you notice I'm just getting water here and then I'm gonna add a little bit of pigment of my Moon Glow, Daniel Smith Moon Glow, and then I'm actually going to get a little bit of phthalo blue and I'm gonna add that to my wash. Now I want a lot of water um, and I do wanna see that blue, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue. Oop, that's too much, so I'm gonna add some more water, some more Moon Glow to kinda of darken it a little bit. There, that looks about right. Now I can always add more water if it gets to be too dark. And I'm gonna show you the end result, but I'm looking for the lightest tones in all these highlights. That's the mix of water and pigment that I want. So all of these tones here that are underneath in the lightest highlights, that's what I'm looking for. Once you put it on the paper and spread it around with more water, it does look a lot lighter. So you can always add more water as you're mixing it on your paper. And then the last pigment that I'm going to, to do is the tongue and the mouth area. And I'm using quinacridone magenta and with quite a bit of water for the tongue and the mouth area. All right, now that my first layer is done, now my second layer, once that first layer is completely dry, I'm gonna come back in with a slightly darker layer of moon glow. And I'm only going to be going around the black. So I'm going to get all of these intermediate tones. So I'm still adding some water, um, and, but my pigment is gonna be solely moon glow and 
Um, I'm looking for the shades, these in-between shades here. So if you see on my final piece, I'm looking at all of these in-between. I'm going to be painting over all of the darkest shades because of course I want to layer and add more dark on top. But um, when I'm mixing my paint, I'm looking at these middle shades. All right, now that we're done with these middle shades, now I'm gonna come back with a lunar black and I'm going to create another layer over my darkest um, values in my painting. So I'm still adding some water to this, to this lunar black. I don't want it to be, I'm gonna add one more layer after this of lunar black. So um, this layer of lunar black, I'll show you where exactly I'm painting. I'm painting over most of the black area. I am leaving, of course, some of these highlighted areas free from black, but I am going over with a very, very light wash of the lunar black in these intermediate tones. So most of my ears are a layer of lunar black. My nose, this highlight here, I did not put any lunar black on, nor did I put any on the highlights under the nostrils but the rest of the nose, I did add lunar black here. So all of these deepest dark lunar blacks that you see, these deep dark black areas, have a second layer of lunar black. All right, now that I have all of my darkest tones accounted for, now and only now am I going to start on the, the tans here that you see in the face. The reason I'm doing that is because I've noticed that if I start with the tan color, my browns actually become too concentrated. So they become too bright in my overall picture. If I leave the browns for the end though, I can add washes. So this has about three different washes on the browns to three different layers. And I can really control how bright those browns are. Remember that your browns and yellows that you're using will actually, they are quite pigmented and so you will get actually quite um, a strong color. So I added too much pigment to this, so I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start again with some water and just bring that pigment down. The first wash that I want is gonna be very light. So I'm gonna to have to have a lot of water, not as much pigment. And now I'm going to um, put my first layer of brown into above the eyes and in the muzzle area.
Okay, now that that's dry, now I'm going to come back and do another layer, adding slightly more pigment. So I might use more of this maple color. That's still kind of gonna be too much. I'm really gonna have to see how it looks on my paper as far as how much pigment. And that's the good thing about having a paper towel or a towel next to you is you can always uh, take pigment away, blot it on your towel, and then um, your you won't be left with so much paint on your paper. So this color I'm going to add to some of the darker values here. So by the eyebrows, you can tell I still have kind of a, a pretty um, hard line there. I didn't blend it in. Um, here it's blended a little bit more, but there are areas where you can see the hard lines. And in this time lapse, you'll also see that I'm adding a, another layer to my tongue. So I am adding a little bit more quinacridone magenta uh, to my water and I'm going to be adding a little bit more color to the deeper values in the tongue. All right, the last step now is to uh, add my splash of color. So I usually do that with all of my paintings. So I wanna get some new water to make sure that it's not, uh, it doesn't have any color. And for this, this splash of color around the outside, I'm going to mix with my water some phthalo blue. Uh, but for me, this blue is really bright on the paper and so I want to tone it down a little bit. So I am going to add some Moon Glow to that. And since Moon Glow is a granulated color, meaning that there are going to be some colors that separate, um, you'll see this nice granulation effect when you uh, add your splash of color. So that looks good to me. Now what I'm going to do first is with some clean water, I'm going to trace, uh, paint with the clean water all around where I want my splash to go. Um, and then I'm gonna drop in the color and I'm gonna have a lot of water with this. The reason why is because I do like having these blooms. Um, blooms are, are color bursts that you see and I do like having some of these hard lines. When I do my color splashes around the outside of my portrait, I never do a full circle around my portrait. So if you noticed, I have more color down on the bottom and it's kind of diagonally across the painting. The reason I'm doing this is because it brings your eye to the center and it's a little bit more visually appealing than to have color uniform around the whole pet portrait. All right, now this last step, I can't show you the video. I usually don't record the last step. Um, I think one day I will so that I can give you a little bit more details. But once I let my whole painting dry, um, and then I take the tape off, I erase any of the lines that you might see, any of the pencil marks with a gummy eraser. Um, and then I'm also going to erase with this gummy eraser any of my masking fluid. Um, my masking fluid, remember I covered the teeth, I covered the whites of the eyes, and um, in certain circumstances, sometimes I cover the whites of the nostrils, here I didn't. Um, so I'm gonna take that gum off and then I'm going to add all of my details. So for most of my paintings, I tend to come back with a uh, micron pen. I usually use a 03 fine tip. And this pen, I'm going to just add some extra details. So I usually always go around the eyes and, and kind of define them a little bit better. And then I usually always go around the outside of my painting. 
But if you notice, I'm not going to have a solid line outline in my painting. I'm going to leave some of those areas without the black line because I don't want it to look too cartoony. Um, but I do want to give it a little bit more definition. So I'm going around the mouth, I'm going around the ears, I outline some of the nose, and then I definitely get the eyes. Then with the teeth, I don't want to leave them white because I do see shadows on the teeth. So for my teeth, I'm going to add um, a little bit of my sassafras, that yellow that we used for the top here, and a little tiny touch of either the lunar black or the moon glow. And then I'm just going to add some of the shadows that I see in the teeth area. Sometimes in my eyes, in those, in those uh, reflective dots in the eyes, I'll add a little bit of blue. Um, and that's only to reflect not only the background color, but most of the pictures of my pets are outdoors. And so you do tend to see some of that sky blue color reflected in their eyes. Once that's all done and I have my pen and I have my teeth and eyes all set, the last step is signing it and you're all done. Now, if your watercolor paper is a little bit bent, uh, you can always flip it upside down on an ironing board and iron the back, or you can leave it pressed in between some heavy books for a little bit, and that just helps to, um, to straighten it out again. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and some of the tips and tricks that I taught you here you'll be able to use in your own paintings. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or let me know if um, there are other breeds of dogs or tricks that you'd like to learn in future tutorials. Thanks and I'll see you.